fact that you got that I don't like you, your, you got poopy pants. You know. Other than that, I thought you had a very good outing. <clears throat> Other than your attitude, you know, in general. I don't think people know how difficult it is to work with you on 25 shots of coffee. I don't think people know how bad your personal hygiene is. Mm -hmm. you know, just overall. So. Oh. But, but luckily on the video, but, they can't. They can't smell. They can't smell, smell anything going on in here. Welcome to the Last Cats video for the 28th of September. Next time we do one of these, it's going to be October, and coming into fall, this is a go-to technique. I don't care what crick you're on. I don't care if you're from the boat or from the bank. Floats and eggs are a great way to get it done through a variety of oh, water conditions and current conditions. Big rains coming this weekend. When Tom called me the other day, he said, "What are we going to do?" Uh, for a last cast segment, last cast video this week, I was like, man, rivers are all going to be dropping into shape this week. It's going to be time to bust out the float rod and go catch some cohos, some chinook. Uh, I've been talking to buddies on the hump tulips, sat up coastal rivers, and they're all stroking fish, float fishing with eggs uh, on, a, on a, a variety of rivers right now. So what are you going to do? You're going to go 10 and a half foot rod. You want a really long rod to keep your line off the water, extend your drift a little bit. This is a Lama Glass Dave Vetter series. 10 to 20, it's rated for 10 to 20 pound line. This is an awesome rod, and, and the nice thing about this rod, a little heavy, but it also works good for steelhead as well. Uh, this is a Diablo Alexa 300 series reel, 30 pound samurai line on here. This is braided line, uh, which is really nice for float fishing. Uh, we're gonna go down to, you can see that there, there's a bobber stop uh, above your float with a bead. And then this is critical, a one ounce float. You're gonna go a lot heavier float this time of year because uh, you're gonna need a bunch of weight below it. Uh, this is a one ounce float with a three quarter ounce egg sinker below it, okay? And what this is gonna do, this is gonna sink that float down to right about there, okay? A swivel tied in uh, 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 to the main line here. Your braid's gonna be tied to the top of that. To the bottom of that, you're gonna tie your leader. This is 30 pound maximum leader. Uh, tied in below it, that's about two feet of leader to a two aught or three aught 92-568 must add 2x strong octopus hook. Some guys will also use a double hook a setup double right hook here, here as well. okay? and, yeah. but tied really, really quite close together. In fact, you yeah. can get by with a pair of one aughts in this situation. I just you want to can. go back to, 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 a, to a couple things you mentioned. Number one, the long rod, absolutely critical for keeping that length of line out of the water and braid floats and will let you make a natural presentation right straight down the creek. If, yeah. you, if you have mono on this, it's going to sink and add drag, and which will amount to sideways movement and in the stream. You big belly in your line, right. and that's really the main thing with mono. We all know about big bellies. Yes, yeah. we do. It's, so another little trick you can do here with either your braid or your mono, you can take fly line floating and run that up your line here, uh, get it either on your mono or your braid, and it really helps that line float on the surface, makes it really nice and easy to mend. Uh, back to the hook here, you know, either a 2 aught or 3 aught. usually I'll run a 3 aught. this happens to be a 2 aught. Uh, I run single hooks, a lot of guys run doubles, you don't miss any fish with a double. Uh, and that's about it uh, for, for salmon fishing, of course you're going to run a gob of eggs on there. And I the, like the heavy bead is a cool, cool deal, this is basically a, a, a lead cheater, if That's you will. a cheater way, that's yeah. made by Bomac, and that's, that's really nice, so if you, you can see, you run that above your eggs, that keeps those eggs right down. Uh, you don't have to run that when it gets really low, maybe maybe the water clears up, I'll actually take that off of there, but when you got some color in the water, I want this thing right down there, right now, right in front of their faces. You're fishing those big drop-offs, that, that deep water. You want to get it down and you really want to slow it down, keep it right in front of their face. You don't want it whizzing by. So with all that weight on there, that really helps you do that. Successful float fishing is all about balance. Big float, big ballast. You need to, you need to weight this float with a nice lead right here, and, and that Bomac lead cheater dog on it. If, we, if you're fishing wintertime steelhead and you got a small jig, you can get by with a small float. Mm -hmm. But you got to think about it. you're loading that thing also with with eggs, which are admittedly neutrally buoyant, but still has still gives some weight. Still to it, gives yeah. some weight to it. So so think about that balance your terminal tackle with your float, and you're going to love this. And, and there's going to be times something's going to draw your attention away from that float, and they're going to hit that thing so hard, you're actually going to hear the float oh, yeah. go down. And the nice thing about this, when they take it, you don't need to set the hook no. right away. Let them take it. You want them to grab those eggs, hold on to them, eat them, 
And, and uh, you know, then you can even reel into reel it. Reel into separate. the bite. And so many successful bait presentations, yeah. you can get by with that, just reeling into the bite. And, and I mean, it's yeah. the same with halibut fishing. It's the same with moochin. You want to reel into the bite. They want those eggs. So That's you see that float jumping like this, what they're doing? They're chewing on those eggs. Just let them have it. So, Rob, so let, them, let them eat those eggs. When that float finally goes down, reel into them, and then set them up. One of the beauties of this technique also is you can fish a variety of current conditions in the stream. I like looking for seams. I like looking for backwaters. Robbo, tell us a little bit about the types of water in which you're going to use a float and egg setup for fall Boy, setup. anything deep right now along some lumber. If you can find some uh, some deep water, it can have current, but boy, that deep, slow, walking speed water, uh, even, even the frog water back in the back eddies. I mean, steelhead sit in water that has a laminar uniform flow. You see those big back eddies, those big, swirly, deep pools. That's where your kings, that's where your co are going to be hanging out, especially if it's got lumber. You got some lumber in there, it's a big, deep, slow water. There's probably going to be salmon hanging out. I love your use of the word laminar as, laminar. as opposed that's to the app. I learned that from you. The actually. opposite of turbulent flow in a stream. And that's another concept to keep in mind for other fault techniques like, like back trolling plugs, but not to get out in left field. This is a killer technique. Something you need to keep in your pocket. It's another just a dirty trick to get some fall salmon in your fish box. Yeah, get rigged up with something like this and go stroke some coho, stroke some chinook. And don't forget to send us your photos or post them up on the Outdoorland.com forums. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week on 710 ESPN Seattle right here on the Outdoorland.